Aloha, you stormer. It is the 13th of June, 2024, and it's time to check in on the world storm. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at Europe. And, well, it appears that Syra have not been watching my previous video. Not one of the tens of people <laughs> watched it. Portugal is floating out in the Atlantic. It's supposed to be here, and France is certainly not over here. It's supposed to be up here, but the rest is okay. Anyway, we've got a bunch of thunderstorms over Central Europe, but it's to the southeast where things are really hotting up. Temperatures are forecast to get into the 40s in some areas. Here are the temperatures for Southeastern Europe, and you might be able to spot, this is for later this afternoon because here it's nighttime but back in Europe it's in the morning and you can see some 42s in here there's some in Cyprus in Turkey over here Greece yep even in Greece there's some 41s and then it's boiling hot down in the Sahara with Ka Cairo in particular being very hot and it's all spreading into Israel Syria severe heat into Iraq as well Over in Florida, it has been extremely wet, and actually, I've heard that Sarasota did break the one hourly rainfall record for that area. And it looks like the thunderstorms have moved to the south offshore, and it looks like they're heading in towards Cuba with Havana beginning to get some very heavy rain from these storms. All part of this big system moving down. But there is an invest in here that the National Hurricane Center are looking at, and I've heard that it is heading over towards the Gulf Stream. So let's do a quick check in on that. Yeah, the National Hurricane Center are centering the invest or disturbance and one 20% chance of formation centered just on the central northern eastern coast of Florida. I do not think this is going to form into a tropical cyclone, but let's have a quick check on the Hurricane Wharf. Scratch that, because the Hurricane Wharf has not been initialized according to tropical tidbits, but we can still look at the GFS. Why not? Let's have a look at it. All right, playing it through, let's see what happens. The system is down here, and it trundles off and doesn't really do anything. Okay, <laughs> so... Yeah, not particularly exciting, but there is another disturbance coming in in the Gulf. Doesn't look like it's really organizing, though. So, so far, uh, well, of course, the GFS does have something in the long term. Wow, okay. Wait a minute. How long term is that? That's showing a storm coming in towards Louisiana. And that is June 25th. Woo! That is 12 days away. Well... So this is a long way out. This is what we would call a GFS cane because it's, you know, it does occasionally do the stuff, but it's quite a large system. So definitely something to keep an eye on. And because that could be a major event if that were to come apart, come to, to pass. In fact, it's so significant, even though it is so far out, we better check the European center model to see if it has anything as well. It won't go out far enough, unfortunately. It does go to June 16th which is not far enough, but there is just stuff down there. So we'll just have to wait and see on that one. We've got another severe thunderstorm day coming up today in the Midwest with looks like we've got enhanced risk across areas of Missouri, Illinois and Iowa. And there is a possibility of tornadoes, but the main threat seems to be very large hail They've got the hashed out and strong and damaging winds. So please be careful out there. Over in Africa, where the northeast is suffering and scorching early summer, down in the south, winter is setting in. And in the Drakensberg Mountains seen here, there is snow on the high mountains. As seen by Sentinel-2.
Meanwhile, in India, wow, look at these temperatures. It is brutal down there. All across the Ganges Basin, we've got temperatures in the mid 40s as we head into the softer noon. And it's not just that the temperatures are really high, but that humidity is going to be brutal in North India. And one of the things you can check in Windy is the wet bulb temperature. And the reason you check the wet bulb temperature is because the wet bulb temperature is the temperature that you can cool down to when you evaporate. So if you're sweating, you'll, you'll, you can cool down to this temperature. So we'll go to the wet bulb. <clears throat> so if the wet bulb is really high, that means that you really can't get cool enough. And if it's too high, you know, it's, it's too high to actually survive. So anyway, let's look at the wet bulb. Where is it? It's somewhere over here. Here it is, up here. Let's click on it. Ah, that's interesting. Let's see what we've got. 22 Celsius. It's actually a little bit, there is actually um, a bit drier air than it could be. Whereas down here, it's actually moister. The temperature itself may not be as high. So it's slightly down. So there's actually a little bit that's interesting. There's a slight difference between the wet bulb and the temperature. So where is the absolute worst place? Probably that combination of temperature. Well, it's really the wet bulb, but somewhere probably down here in, near Calcutta. Really brutal temperature and humidity. The low pressure system has moved unusually far to the north up the western coast of South America, striking Chile with lots of heavy rain, even down in usually dry San Diego. Look at this snowfall. It's absolutely piling in towards the Andes, bringing really heavy snow. The, these rates are three hourly rates of 20 centimeters. So we must be getting some really big totals as the system moves through. Let me just push this forward a little bit and see how it goes. Wow. It really does bump up. So this is really dangerous. I would imagine very dangerous avalanche conditions developing in the central Andes of uh, Chile and Argentina uh, around the San Diego, uh, Santiago region and even stretching further north to places which usually don't get so much snow. So let's look at these snowfall totals. To do that, just go to more layers and you'll find the snow new snow here wow okay so it's really really a lot very very dangerous conditions 150 centimeters of new snow over five days 160 getting up there i would not be surprised if it's going over two meters in the yeah well over two meters in the 10-day forecast and this is central andes once this clears, we should get some pretty awesome satellite imagery, so stay tuned for that too. And we'll see those snowy mountains. We're continuing to monitor a large, lumbering, multi-center, low-pressure system in the Tasman Sea that is menacing New Zealand, bringing heavy rain across most of the country, if not all of the country. There's some periods of heavy rain as it, the winds shift direction and hit different coasts. You'll see the, the low looks like it's going to head off to the east, but then it kind of spins around and lumbers, and then we get some rain coming down even to the far southeast of the South Island, snow in the Alps. And it lingers and lingers and lingers. And look at this thing. It's just going on and on. So bands of heavy rain, particularly across the North Island. And then it does look like, well, maybe they're, oh, towards the end, then we've got South Island getting some precip with widespread as this cold air begins to tuck in on the southern side of the system. Heavy snow into the Southern Alps. So... You know what, I'm going to have to look at the snowfall totals because it does look quite heavy for a time as we head towards into the early part of next week. Heavy snow. Here are the snowfall totals. You can see it's 67 centimeters or so. In the, oh, it gets above 70 centimeters, so the ski season will be going pretty good by the end of next week, I imagine. 
a little bit of snow up in the southern alps of australia uh, southern alps australian alps even a dash in tasmania there's some snow there right now actually from this cold blast on the western side of the lumbering low pressure system prior to this system sentinel 2 caught this great view of mount taranaki just peeking up above a field of vast field of strata cumulus clouds i love the way it just hold, is holding out against the vast tasman sea to its west and that's about it for today thanks for watching see you in the next one